One of the things that the nurses did tell me though, was that when you have your twins, your other sibling will just naturally, no matter what you do, start to feel left out. Mm. So one of the things that they advised was that whenever you do something special with the twins, and by special, it just meant that would take my actual undivided attention, like nursing or feeding them even. Mm -hmm. Do something special for your toddler as well. That's along the same lines. Mm. So if I was going to be bathing and dressing the twins, she said, do something fun, like maybe get an outfit out that your daughter hadn't seen before and mm -hmm. have her change into that or new pajamas or something okay. fun. Because, you know, she was one and a half. She could do a lot on her own. Mm -hmm. She still needed mommy, of course. But, yeah. you know, if I was going to sit down and feed the twins, they suggested I get a cool little lunch box or like a treasure chest mm -hmm. so I could have a snack in for my daughter. Like, okay, snack time. So right. she got to participate as well, too. And she was a really good big sister in that she always wanted to help. You know, she would come over and help with binkies or bring me Aww. diapers or, you know, rub. The hardest part with twins, too, is that you just don't have enough hands. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you have one baby, you could hold the baby and you could still be cooking, cleaning, on the phone, doing anything you need to do. Right. When you have twins... You're kind of stuck. And then when you have twins and another baby, you literally run out of arms. So, <laughs> And it was nice, too. I had had um, quite a few friends who had had twins throughout their lives. Some okay. recently, you know, some in years previous. But a lot of them told me something that I didn't believe at first. And they all said, whatever you do for one baby, do it for the second baby, whether they need it or not. And I'm coming from never wake a sleeping child, only give the baby what they need type of mentality. And I thought... Yeah what? If one baby needs a diaper change, why would I change the second baby's diaper? If one daughter mm -hmm. tells me that she's hungry and she's crying and fussy, why would I wake up the other to feed her? And I thought, oh, these ladies are crazy. <laughs> After about six days, I realized what they were talking about because you would feed one baby and put that baby down and just sit down. And guess what? The second one wake up and want the same thing. You would change one baby's diaper and sit down. And within a few minutes, the next baby would need mm. it. And it would just, I mean, they're, they're identical twins. Always. They were on the same schedule mm -hmm. within maybe 10 minutes of one another. And then I started to realize that I was spending entire days just doing baby things. Yeah. Which is fine. But I'm also still a wife and I'm still a mother to another daughter and I'm still a human. So I really wasn't getting any time for myself. I would go and make something to eat and a baby would cry. So I would put it down. You can't nurse if you're not eating and drinking, if you're not taking care of yourself. And I know the whole mm -hmm. sleep thing kind of goes out the window for the first few months, but if you're not getting more than an hour of sleep at a time, you're not helping anyone. Mm -hmm. So I told my husband, okay, let's try it for two days. And if after two days there's a marked difference, we're going to stick with it. So if one baby would wake up in the night, I would change her diaper and get her ready to eat. My husband would do the same. Second baby, we'd feed them both, done. And after like mm -hmm. half of a day, I realized... I gained an extra two hours back today yeah. just in having these smaller breaks where I could spend some time with my toddler or take a shower or, you know, God forbid, make myself a sandwich mm -hmm. and eat it at the same time. You know, little things that you just kind of take for granted. Wow. So from that point on, they're always on the same schedule. Yeah. Moms of twins, definitely pay attention to that because I know you've told me this before and I think mm -hmm. that's such a awesome tip because mm -hmm. um, I know we have a lot of moms watching and a lot of moms in the group that are expecting twins right now so yeah that is awesome mm -hmm. so what other tips do you have for either new moms of twins or moms that are currently expecting twins yeah. so if you're expecting twins and you don't have other children yet just be prepared for the fact that you're going to need two of pretty much everything. Um, when our twins were first born, we did have them in the same crib until they were big enough to start to roll over on their own, just because then I had one monitor on the crib and I could see them both. But you'll need two cribs, two car seats, two swings, two boppies, two of everything you might need because you're not just doing it for one, you're doing it for two babies at the same time. Mm -hmm. So to a lot of parents who you know don't have any children and are starting with two, that's kind of daunting. You know, a crib is $1,000 in some cases. Well, <laughs> I need two. Yeah. A car seat's a couple hundred dollars, and I need two. So what we tried to do, um, thankfully we had had an older daughter, so we got to reuse a lot of her things because they were only a year old. Yeah. But what we tried to do was be as mindful and resourceful and versatile as possible in our choices. They make a lot of car seats that are super cool in that um, it's the baby carrier, and then it just clicks into a base in the car. Mm. So I didn't have to buy four separate car seats yeah. to have two for my car 
and two for my husband or maybe for grandma and grandpa. I just got the extra bases, the extra pieces. Mm. And then that would also fit into the stroller. So I had one stroller and then grandma and grandpa would have a stroller, whoever helps you out. So it was nice to just give it some thought in advance on mm -hmm. how you can spread your money and resources as much as possible and not go broke before the baby even comes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the awesome. other thing too, when you have twins is it's uh, sad to say it, but someone's always going to be crying. I mean, you just, mm -hmm. you don't have enough hands. You can't get to each baby fast enough. And part of the hardest uh, being a mom, you know, who wants to do a great job is you just have to realize that you can't be everywhere at every moment. You know, if you're giving one baby a bath or changing one diaper, the other baby wants you too. And all they know how to do is cry to tell you that they need something. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're the detective to figure it out. So don't be too hard on yourself. You know, babies will not die from crying. They're not going to be crying for 10 minutes. They might be crying for one or two. It, same thing, you, you know, every time you go sit down to go to the bathroom, guess what? Someone's going to wake up and want you. And they're going to cry for that minute until you're done and you can wash your hands and go help them. But it's not going to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. And I always like to end interviews with a couple of fun thinking Ooh, questions, okay. I call them. So if you could have a billboard made today where you share one tip with moms everywhere, what would you have it say? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, let me think. I know you've, you've shared so many awesome I tips. So like, <laughs> something I haven't said. I think it would probably say, be the superhero your children already think you are. It's really neat when you look through your child's eyes, especially as they get a little older and they start drawing and like, you know, telling their teachers, this is a picture of me and my mom doing this. Mm -hmm. They see you as this amazing person who can do no wrong. So why let them down? You know, do everything you can to just fill that mold. And mm -hmm. obviously it's not going to be perfect. There's times when you lose your temper or you don't have time or you're tired or they're not feeling good, but why not try? Just try to be the best you can for them. Mm -hmm. Get down to their level. Listen to what they're telling you. Give them hugs and let them stop hugging you. Like that's something <laughs> that I was told when I was little and it's so true. A child will stop hugging you when they're ready. And guess when that is? Never. <laughs> Never stop hugging you. Just they love you so much. So yeah, yeah just I be, love that. Yeah.